inviting uh, this conversation with you uh, and to ask for some wisdom from your perspective on what treaty means. Okay. Uh, before again, let me introduce myself in my language. In my language, I say Abojo, Zangaske, Dishnakaz, Makwendado, Dep, Wasak, Bonjaba, Ojibwe, Parawarmi, Mingwambangi, Scottish, Nenendao. So I've said everything about myself in that phrase. My Ojibwe name is Zangaske, which means a sun ray. When my grandmother had the vision for my name. She saw a ray of sunlight go across the sky before the sun came up. So that's my name, Zagoske, Sun Ray. And I'm Bear Clan. Our families are based upon seven animals. The Bear Clan, is a, he's the protector of children. He's also the medicine people are from that clan. And they're also what we call the police clan. We just make sure the clan system works. That's what we believe. <laughs> we don't convict anybody of crimes or anything. So the other thing, I'm from Wasoxi. It's an area near Perry Sound from the Seagull River to just north of the Moon River. It's an area that the people saw when they were over at Cape Croker and they migrated to the west. They came across to that area of land called Ross Soxy, and then they traveled westward to the, the Manitoba uh, border with Ontario uh, near the head of Lake Superior. So, of course, you know, as we traveled across this land and we migrated, there was also a, there was always a great diplomacy amongst the people before contacting. We would ask about sharing resources. We would ask for invitation to stay in certain places to raise our families. And even then, some of the people, when they lived together, the nations that worked together, they had wampums to reinforce treaties or, or, or agreements or associations. And every once in a while, they could get together and they, were, they would review the wampum, sort of like reviewing the treaty is what they would do. So there would be a reinforcement of the agreement every year or so. So that's what happened was here before the treaty making process came from, from the newcomers. But one thing we always saw when the new, newcomers came, came here, there's lots of land, they had lots of water, lots of air. We also carry the concept, nobody owns that. So it was always there for sharing. So I remember stories from my granny, when she talked about the treaty making process. I grew up near Prairie Sound in West Auckland. So very similar to down here in the Williams Tree area. You know, this agreement, people, uh, because we're from an oral tradition, we spoke about things we saw in agreement. We will share our land with you, just like we would share everything that's here, everything that comes to land, that's accessible to you. Everything that the land gives you, that's available to you, so we thought. And then even when in return, we ask that same thing from you, the Europeans. Eh? Everything you have from the way you are, that's accessible to us, is what we understood. So in the treaty making, there was a balance eh, with the trading and the understanding and the sharing of resources that each each party held. So when I was small, my grand told me how was in the treaty, everything from, you know, like that, that education, that health care, the sharing of resources that was all in there. But when I was a young man, I actually read that treaty. It's actually just a land transfer agreement. <laughs> I was very surprised to see that there was nothing that my grand talked about in that written document. So that in itself was a, was a shock. But I think historically the treaty making process is one that in various areas will have different stories. In my community on Georgian Bay there, as nowadays it's called Perry Island, near that place. When Robinson came to negotiate that Robinson-Huron Treaty, uh, the women told the men that they can go and listen to him. They go listen to him, then come back and tell us what he says. So that's what the men did. They went, they listened to him, and they came back. So when they spoke to the community, what Robinson was saying, the community listened. And they said, OK, go back and tell him this. It's what they were instructed to do. But they say the men went back, and then that's when they got involved with alcohol. They say the men got drunk and signed the treaty. So even every once in a while, we talk about that. For our community, we should push to reopen that treaty because our men weren't of the right mind when they opened opened up when they signed that treaty. So the treaty making process was 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 that way for us. And in many places there was a lot of misunderstandings due to the different world views. Eh? The written word written down on paper, those were very, very specific. Although at times it can be open to interpretation, it can appear to be ambiguous. Eh? But in, uh, in the conceptual language of the Anishinaabe, eh, there was a great understanding in a different level, a greater sharing, a greater understanding of harmonious uh, friendship and well-being that way. 
for one thing, the concept of land ownership was foreign. Okay? For example, just to let you know, the Robinson Huron Treaty on the shores of Georgian Bay, of which Penetang is, is part of that, we never uh, ceded the islands. The 30,000 islands were, were unceded by us eh, because they belonged to the spirits. No one owned them but the spirits, so we thought they weren't part of the treaty. There were other things that we, we didn't understand, you know, property. When someone owned property, we couldn't walk across that land. Whereas one time we had free freedom to roam, and roam everywhere, everywhere and, uh, and gather resources. But the one, one of the greatest misunderstandings in contemporary times is that some people think that only the, the indigenous people follow the treaties. They, they think we're treaty Indians, so we're treaty people. We live under the treaty. And that's only half of the equation. All the newcomers here are treaty people too, because it was a treaty between nations. Eh? So that's kind of what's fallen by the wayside, just like how the nations here used to get together and review a welcome. They're actually, if we follow the tradition, there'd be an early review of the treaty. So that people, there would be a reinforcement of that, that this exists from year to year. And actually what we do, we'd have a big feast, <laughs> a big celebration for the treaty. If we implemented that again, eh, the misunderstandings that we have now certainly would be a lot smaller than they are right now. So that's just a little bit about the treaty where I come from. But just right here where we're sitting in Simcoe County, eh, at one time a people called the Wendat, eh, this was part of Wendaki, eh, right here in English is called Huronia. When you think about the Wendat, they don't live here anymore. Some went west, some are in Quebec. Eh. Last time I spoke to a Wendat person from Quebec, he said, yeah, we don't live there right now. He goes, but you and Anishinaabe can hold on to it until we get back. Yeah. <laughs> this is a little story about the history of the land. <laughs> yes. And so as we, you know, shuffle through this kind of time, as you mentioned, where uh, we associate treaties on the indigenous side, but have forgotten about the responsibility on the the settler side, and certainly the, this conversation that we're attempting to have here is to reawaken our understanding that we're all treaty people and that we're living up to this ideal of how we can share the land in productive ways for all of us, that we can all benefit from this, the bounty of creation and creator's gift to us. And uh, so I know some of the work that you do is helping uh, those folks who have suffered because of this inequality and, and the need to get back to a, a sense of us all being whole people. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, can you tell us a bit about some of the work that you do around that? Yeah, much of the work that I do, in, in the gods, what I do is I help people find their identity. Uh, we have uh, wellness by knowing who we are. So when people who've been uh, moved from our culture, uh, one of the things I do is help them find their name, say their spirit name or Anishinaabe names. So that's one of the things that uh, contact were removed from us. We were given English names, mostly because of mispronunciation. A lot of European language speakers find our languages over here very hard to, to pronounce. In fact, my, my nation, Wasoxing, that's an anglicized version of of wasoxing, exactly wasoxing. It has glottal stops in it. Eh? I have a funny story about language. Eh? When I started school, because a glottal stop is a consonant in our language, eh? when I started school, saying a apple was okay. It's a apple, because to me, the sound in between is a consonant. But when I got to school, I was told, you can't say that. You can't say a apple, it's an apple. <laughs> so I was given an English consonant to fill a spot where I heard a concert or anything. So just the differences in language uh, led to some of that, you know, uh, how we how we came to be. But for sure, identity is our, our, our Ojibwe names. Next thing, like I mentioned, my clan, which would be your family responsibility. Because your last name is your responsibility to the village. We had an inside leader, an outside leader, a strategist, a philosopher, advisor. We had teachers, spiritualists. We had people involved with social um, social health. We had people involved with health. So much of what I do is I reintroduce people to those concepts. Yeah, that's helpful. Identity is so important 
to us all and to feel that uh, that identity represents uh, our both to ourselves and to the rest of the world okay? and uh, yeah. uh, so I appreciate the, the wisdom and uh, we'll have to have you come and, and drum for us at St. <laughs> Paul's that we've, uh, we've appreciated your drumming but it doesn't right. quite uh, uh, on Zoom it's <laughs> only mm -hmm. of, of such a level isn't it yeah. so um, yeah. But it's it's been wonderful to get to know you a bit, John, and and to know you as a member of our community, and to, so we hope that we can continue to develop a relationship as we all work to be treaty people together uh, and to live on this land. So, oh, so for th sure. So thank you. You're welcome. I didn't join drumming. Thank you. There, drumming. All right. Okay. Big witch. Big witch. <laughs>